So when we look at these lists of compounds, I want to first break them up into who are molecular compounds, who's ionic, and metallic. All right, so who, how would I just, what is molecular? Yes? It's non-metal bonded to non-metal. Right, it's covalent bonds. Covalent compounds have bonds in exact positions. They're going to make exact particles. They're going to make molecules. So if you look at your reference table, carbon's a non-metal, hydrogen non-metal. So my molecular compounds are things that are bonded covalently. Non-metal, non-metal. My C and my H. N, bonding to itself. That's a non-metal bonded to a non-metal. How about D? How about C? What do you think about C? Titanium. By itself, it's not. How about D? Yes, carbon tetrachloride. How about E, calcium and chlorine bonded like that? Right. No. And how about potassium and, and phos phosphorus, oxygen, whatever that compound is? No. I don't want to say the name of it. Why? No. Why? Because, well, I do see that there is some non-metals here. However, this is what I call the what the heck that cluster. That is a polyatomic ion. This PO4 is negative 3 collectively in table E. So that is attracting this positive one. This is ionic. What, key, what, what, what could always key you off an ionic is seeing at least one metal in a group of other things. Now, I could give you examples of things that are ionic that don't have metals, and we'll talk about that today at the, at, when we do some nomenclature. But this is a polyatomic ion. If you see a group of nonmetals clustered, what the heck is that? That's a polyatomic ion. So you should be able to figure out that these three are molecular compounds. Now, I could ask you, which are the following? Now, by knowing the properties of molecules, I'm asking you which of the following are covalent and who are molecular. But the bottom line, molecular means molecules. Molecules are covalent. Covalent must be nonmetal, nonmetal. Why? Because they're forced to share. Why? Nonmetals have very high electronegativities, so they have to share to become stable and have their uh, stable electron configurations. Now, moving forward, I could ask you, which of the following have the lowest melting points? Now, we know metallic compounds are metals. We know ionic compounds stick together by strong ions. So I guess before I go ahead, let's label the other two. Who are ionic? Who are my ionic compounds? Uh, definitely, definitely E. Oops, <laughs> not do that. Definitely E and F. Correct. So we have E and F are ionic. Well, C has a metal, but it's not a bonding to something else that's a non-metal. See. The easiest definition of an ionic compound is a metal and a nonmetal. Why? A metal and a nonmetal means you have someone who is easy at losing electrons, a low electronegativity, weak in my tug of war, and someone who has a high attraction. So there's going to be a transfer. You're going to make positive negative ions. This one, you have a metal that's positive, but you have this cluster. You have to identify these clusters of what the heck is that cluster. That's a polyatomic ion. So this is ionic. Titanium by itself can't be ionic because titanium, even if it was positive by itself, it has nothing to attract. When you have a formula of a metal hanging out by itself, it means that titanium is bonding to titanium, which is bonding to titanium. You don't put a number there because no one's going to count. If I have copper wire, what's the formula of the copper in my copper wire? See you. You're not going to say, well, I got to sit there and I got to count those atoms first and see what number goes there. No, it's just pure copper. So if I've got titanium metal in a bar, okay, I would just put TI there. So TI obviously is going to be my metallic substance. Let's go find a color for him. Is that a different color? Yeah. All right, so there's titanium, and that's metallic. So we have three types of bonding. Non-metal, non-metal, they make molecules. Metal, non-metal, but we know a better definition. Ions, positive and negative ions sticking together. Sometimes it'll be 
two different, binary, sometimes it'll be ternary. And then we have metallic, which really mean that the elements are just bonding to themselves as a metal. Okay, and here comes some questions. Once you have that broken down, here's some questions I can give you. Of the three types, who has the highest, well, who has the lowest melting point? Yes? The molecular. Absolutely. Now I said to you, molecular compounds, because they're particles, they stick to other particles not as strongly as a positive sticks to a negative, or as metals stick together. Think of, if you don't want to think of those kind of things, think of what you know to be true. What in your environment is made of non-metals, bonded to non-metals? Plastics, leather, butter, margarine. Do they melt at high temperatures? No. <laughs> of course not. Okay, plastics especially. Okay, P plastics, PVC, these all melt at low temperatures comparatively. What's that? Else melt at zero degrees Celsius. That's not a high temperature. But ice is a molecular compound, absolutely. Yes. Okay. So molecular compounds, comparatively speaking, have the lowest melting point. So I could have said to you, which of the following compounds has the lowest melting point? You would say, oh, I'm looking for molecular compounds. I'm looking for covalent bonds. I picked this color coordination. Okay? I could say to you, which of the following choices has nonpolar bonds? Now, as soon as you hear the word polarity, we are only talking about what kind of substance? As soon as you hear the word polarity, can Metals be polar, bonding to metals. Remember, what does polarity mean? Differences, right? Brodsky is one way, and he's another way. Differences. Titanium, titanium, titanium is no differences. Ionic compounds can't be polar. Why? Can you have one side of a crystal have more negatives and positives? They can't move. So we're only talking about unequal sharing of electrons. So I look at my molecular compounds, and I got to see, where do I have bonds that are being shared equally or unequally? Well, if I said to you the question, who is the nonpolar, you'd probably pick this one. Now, if you draw this one out, you'll see that this one actually has a nonpolar bond, too. What does a nonpolar bond look like? Let's look at, let's look at choice B. We do B, right? Two ends. And we've done this one before. N bonding to N has a triple bond, and they're sharing electrons right down the middle. Anytime you've got the same element bonded to themselves, because they have the same attraction, electronegativity, fancy word, this side of the bond has the same attraction. Okay? Which compounds make crystals? From these three choices, one, two, three. Who makes crystals? Yes. Ionic makes crystals. Someone else makes crystals. Believe it or not, metallic with themselves. Which substance only conducts electricity in the liquid phase or the aqueous phase? We call them electrolytes. We need them in our body. No, molecular compounds don't have a positive and negative, right? These guys conduct when they dissolve. So we need salts in our body. It's a fancy word for ionic. So I said to you, which of the following are electrolytes? I'm saying to you, which ones, when they melt and pull away from their crystal, or get dissolved by those molecule ion attractions, those famous boyfriend, famous girlfriend attractions, where the ions be free? So our body, we have sodium and chlorine and potassium ions in our body that create electricity in our nervous system. I'm talking about things that make ions. And I've been harping on this without a harp. These things will make free ions once they are either melted or dissolved. Now remember our demonstration, right? Remember our demonstration. Bring an Ernie back. Rocking with Ernie. And here comes Ernie. Ernie, remember, lights up. 
two metals. Why are these two metals conduct electricity? What do they have? They have free, yes, they have a sea of more, they have free electrons. How do we conduct electricity? There are two ways. Free moving electrons or, or what? Conducting heat, we're up to electricity though. You need free moving electrons, so titanium. Would titanium conduct electricity, you think? Yes. And titanium solid will conduct because it has free moving electrons. But what about a salt that's a solid? We did this a while back, but I want to revisit it because I want to bring home these differences. So if I take my sodium chloride, okay, and I make a pile of it right here. Sodium chloride, it's Na plus Cl negative. It's this right here. I want to conduct electricity. I put them right into the salt. Does not conduct. Solid ionic compounds do not conduct. Why not? Yeah. They don't have free movement electrons or ions, correct. Who else doesn't conduct in a solid phase? Water, pure water doesn't, you're right, but I'm hitting now wood. Wood is made of cellulose. Cellulose is nonmetals and nonmetals. Wood does not conduct electricity. So molecular substances, which are covalent, do not conduct. Ionic solids do not conduct. The only solids that conduct because of their free-moving electrons are metals. So metallic substances, metals bonded to metals, only conduct in the solid phase. Molecular and ionic do not. But molecular will never conduct because it's never going to have any free electrons. Why? What does covalently bonded substances do with their electrons? Hold on to them too tightly. That's why the rubber around the wild is an insulator. They'll never move. Therefore, electrons can't affect other electrons. But if I take this salt and I put it in some water, and I dissolve it. I'm not going to heat it, but if I dissolve it, okay, what's going to happen to Ernie? Good. So I take some of this solid, push Ernie back a little bit, put some, this is how you do it when, you, when, you're, when you're a cook, okay? <laughs> All right. Now, we know that putting these electrodes in, ow, putting these electrodes in, there's going to be no conduction. Ernie doesn't light up, but he's not supposed to. But if I was to put some Vasa in here, okay, Ernie lights up. Because now, by the action of the water, the water, remember these, these electrodes are not touching. Yes, they'll light up if they touch. But what's happening is, what's creating a charge or conduction is the ions flowing. By positive ions going to the negative, right? You're creating a negative on this side. If all the positive ions move to this side of the beaker, this side now becomes negative and that's how charge is conducted in a beaker of a solution. And we call salts, ionic compounds, electrolytes. The ions are free. I've showed you this. I'm trying to bring it all home. Now I can't melt it, but if I melt this solid, does it not mean it has water in it? If I melt it and heat it and make it into like a slurry, it will also conduct. I can't do that. I can't heat this up enough. All right, so ionic compounds never conduct in a solid, but are called electrolytes when dissolved or, when, or as a liquid, all right? Those are the major differences. Now, you'll hear the word solubility sometimes, okay? Normally metals don't dissolve. You can't drop a metal into water and it dissolves. It goes into the water to make a solution. So not soluble. Generally speaking, molecular compounds, most of them are nonpolar. Think of fats plastics, 
gasoline, leather, they don't really dissolve, do they? Fat, oil don't mix. So these are normally not soluble. They don't mix with water. But we know that what? Ionic compounds can be soluble. And when they are soluble, they create or can conduct electricity. Now, let's do this again. Someone asked me, and I think someone said that molecular compounds can conduct electricity. Well, I'm going to take sugar. Now, sugar is C6H12O6. Actually, it's glucose. Okay? So I'm going to take some sugar. But what I'm going to do is do the same demonstration with sugar. Now, sugar is made up of molecules. I'm going to dissolve the sugar. And the reason why I can dissolve the sugar party, people, is because the sugar is polar and the water is polar. Can anyone explain that to me? Sugar has a negative side and a positive side. Water has a negative side and a positive side. So will they interact? Yes. So I can dissolve. We'll talk more about this in solution. So starting with water again. And as Chris said, water with no ions should not conduct. Water itself is made up of nonmetals and nonmetals. So it doesn't conduct. Now, it conducts when they hit. What I'm going to do is add some sugar. Sugar is a molecular substance. It is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, all nonmetals. Again, when you cook, you do this. Okay. Now, if I dissolve it, And we know we can make sugar water, it does dissolve, it's polar, so it does interact with the polar water, and put this in, I get nothing. Electrolytes are not molecular. Water, although it, I'm sorry, sugar, although it's polar, it's not, a pot, it's not an ion, it doesn't have free ions. It's going on because the electrodes are touching. So molecular compounds like sugar water or sugar, do never, ever conduct. They don't have free ions. They don't have free what? Electrons. Solid ionic compounds never conduct unless they are melted or they're dissolved in water. OK? OK. All right, take out your labs.